Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Friday, December 8, 2023. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has wrapped up high-level talks on a range of issues with U.S. government officials as part of a working visit to Washington, D.C. On Tuesday, Mr. Holness met with U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and discussed several matters affecting the region, ranging from crime to climate change. The White House meeting was also aimed at advancing bilateral cooperation on promoting inclusive economic growth and climate-resilient infrastructure. It discussed combating transnational criminal organizations and the trafficking of illicit drugs and firearms, as well as promoting regional security under Plan Secure Jamaica. During the meeting, the U.S. National Security Advisor thanked Prime Minister Holness for his steadfast support for a multinational security support mission to Haiti and Jamaica's leadership in facilitating an inclusive political dialogue among Haitian society. The Prime Minister and the delegation also went to the Pentagon on Tuesday, where he met with Secretary of the Navy, Carlos Del Toro. He also held meetings with the chairpersons of the House Ways and Means Committee, the House Financial Services Committee, and the House Foreign Affairs Committee, as well as U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland. Prime Minister Holness ended his working visit to Washington on December 7. Three local organizations have received grant funding to boost their capacity to assist vulnerable communities. The grant, totaling 170,467 Canadian dollars, or approximately 19.5 million Jamaican dollars, has been awarded to the Jamaica Association for the Deaf, the Bureau of Gender Affairs, and the Clarendon Parish Development Committee Benevolent Society. It's been awarded by the Canadian government through its Local Engagement and Action Fund, LEAF, which which helps organizations in eight Caribbean countries access financial resources to address key developmental issues. Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport Olivia Grange says LEAF underscores the joint commitment of the Jamaican and Canadian governments to promoting socio-economic empowerment, gender equality, equity and social justice. So this unique partnership between the government and the High Commission of Canada in Jamaica facilitates the recognition and promotion of entrepreneurship as a viable and practical path to independence and autonomy. The Bureau of Gender Affairs will be using the funds to implement the Women in Entrepreneurship Support Project Phase 2. This initiative will provide the necessary tools and skills for 25 women with disabilities to start and sustain their own businesses. The Clarendon Parish Development Committee Benevolent Society will use its funding to support BizBridge. It's an initiative that offers business development and life skills to 30 young people, diverting them from a path that might lead to criminal activities. And the Jamaica Association for the Deaf will use its grant to empower hearing-impaired community stakeholders with advocacy, critical thinking and problem-solving skills. This will include an inter-school competition and science fair among schools for the deaf. Minister of Labor and Social Security Pernell Charles Jr. made a commitment to assist the organizations with the implementation of their proposals. Not just showing up, but in the implementation, in the advancement, and making sure that the investment leads to positive outcomes, we will be there to give our support um, as partners. 70,000 individuals are set to benefit from upskilling and certification as part of the growth initiative for the Global Digital Services Sector, GDSS, by the end of 2024. This was disclosed at Wednesday's graduation ceremony for 367 apprentices in the supervisory management and leadership management tracks of the GDSS apprenticeship program. The program is being executed by the Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO, with Hart NSTA Trust responsible for the training and assessment of individual skills development. With over 3,200 employees enrolled across two training cohorts, leadership and, and management and supervisory management, we have fostered substantial, a substantial cadre of managers equipped to lead and manage with skill and vision. The skills development component of the GDSS is focused on building capacity at the mid-level tier in the sector to increase the earning potential for Jamaica. 
Hart has trained about 3,500 apprentices so far, with 15 GDSS firms participating. Whilst training is not a part of the direct mandate of JAMPRO, the scope of our engagement supports a close collaboration and dialogue with agencies of government that help to ensure that our investment clients, who are exporters, are able to access the human resources that they need. And so we speak proudly about the dedicated partnership available with agencies such as Heart NSTA Trust. The government is investing 15 million US dollars under a loan agreement with the Inter-American Development Bank to support the development of the global digital services sector through training over a five-year period. Farmers now have easier access to extension support services with the new Rural Agricultural Development Authority RADA mobile app. The app was launched during a recent function in Portland. According to RADA's acting chief executive officer, Winston Simpson, it is a user-friendly tool to allow effective communication between farmers and extension officers. Essentially, the RADA mobile app seeks to empower our farmers, both those that are registered and those that are aspiring to be farmers. And this provides essential agricultural resource tailored to their needs. Farmers gain access or can gain access to a wealth of agricultural information. This includes crop management techniques, pest control strategies, and sustainable farming practices. Mr. Simpson was speaking at a JIS think tank session this week. He says farmers can gain access to the most recent agricultural trends, innovations, and cutting-edge technologies while their data is being protected. The RADA mobile app is available in the Google Play Store for Android users. And finally, 33 persons from 12 countries have newly been granted Jamaican citizenship by the government. They were presented with documents formalizing their status by the Passport, Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA, during a citizenship ceremony at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel on Monday. The men, women and children hail from France, Colombia, the People's Republic of China, Haiti, India, Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the United States of America, Barbados and South Africa. PICA's Chief Executive Officer Andrew Winter welcomed the new Jamaicans, pointing out that while they were from a wide cross-section of nationalities, they now belonged to a single heritage. He said the ceremony was a testament to Jamaica's motto, out of many, one people. Mr. Winter encouraged the new citizens to continue making their contributions to Jamaica's growth and development. Some of you are doctors, nurses, beauty practitioners, whatever your profession is, whatever you do, it is contributing to this country growing and continue to grow. We are happy that you have joined us today to become Jamaicans. And you are going to help us to build the whole human race, to contribute to that whole human race. Nineteen persons obtained citizenship by marriage, nine by registration, two by naturalization, and three by descent. Jamaican citizenship is granted by virtue of marriage, registration for Commonwealth citizens, naturalization for non-Commonwealth citizens, by descent for persons whose birth was not registered and citizenship is in doubt, and restoration for persons who had previously renounced their Jamaican citizenship. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.